For about 10 years now, I've lived here with my family. And for those of you who don't know what this is, well, this structure is called a yurt, also known by the Mongolians as a gur. And it is an alternative lower cost housing option. At least it has been for us. And it's allowed us to pursue and live our farming and homesteading dreams. Grab this first. Leaking down there. Oh, whoops. Oh, Guess I just loosened that up, moving it. I should turn it off for now. All right. All right. All right. Uh. Throughout these years that we've been on this journey, homesteading, farming, growing our own food, raising our own animals, and living here in a yurt. There's been a lot of projects that have been DIY projects that, that we have done, but there's also been projects where I've had hired help to work on and do things that I just didn't feel comfortable with doing. And then come to find out some of the hired help that we had, well, some were more experienced and better than others. But on both the DIY projects and the ones that we've hired out, looking back, well, there's some things that we frankly would have done differently and there's some that I feel comfortable in the way that we did it in the past but our needs and our wants have just changed over the years and one of the things that I would have done differently is right up here in our loft in the yurt the loft is primarily over the bathroom and our hallway where the kids have their bunk beds and I would have made it just a little bit shorter than we made it because that would have given us more headspace up here, more storage area, which this area pretty much is because it gets pretty warm up here. Pretty hot, I should say, not warm, hot here in the spring and summer months. It actually gets pretty hot up here in the winter too when the heat from the wood stove and all the heat just rises, all the heat just comes up here. So it's not really a comfortable place to, to just dwell in because of that, but that's why we use it as a storage area right now. Let's grab that one. Let's see, boys, toddlers, we can use that. All right, so grab that. It's a little heavy. There you go. Got it. Got it. Easy down. Yep, easy down. You want me to take this outside? Yeah, put it on that table I have right outside. Man, this is pretty old. <laughs> Got some stuff that I saved from when I was a kid. Got this X-Men game here. <laughs> and some more of my stuff from before. Let's see here. My stuff. Of course my stuff's the heavy stuff. And then what do we have in here? Oh, look at there. Got one of my old bodybuilding trophies there. Uh, jersey. We got some Barry Sanders jersey. <laughs> and some of my old G.I. Joe toys. Yo, <laughs> Joe!
I'm gonna carry this one out. Got heavy. And it's special to me. <laughs> Another thing that I'd like to do is, and would have liked to have done earlier, is put an official ladder to the loft. Some people who have yurts have a stairway to it, but I'd like to have a ladder. We probably will do one here real soon to just go right up there so we don't have to set up a ladder and go all over the place. But we've made a number of different changes while living here. So if we would have had a ladder up at the beginning, we probably would have had to move it anyways. But <laughs> that's just one thing else I would change. And I think we may put that ladder over here, so it'll be so easy to go right up to the loft. Right. One thing about up here though, it, things do get pretty dusty. So we have to make sure things stay covered and start to go bad. Just be yucky. Watch it. I think that should give us enough room to get in here and work to make our other change. That opens up the wires so we can work on that. projects that I really prefer to have hired help on is electrical projects because I just don't like working with electricity. Don't like it at all. And when we first set up this yurt, we had some loving, kind electricians that we know of that came from out of state to help us get the electricity set up here in the yurt. And since then, over the years, we've had other electricians, some okay, some good, some just, we're definitely not hiring back. Time ago, I found out that my friend Corrine, the one that runs the Bradford Market where we sell produce to, well, we found out that her husband, Frank, is an electrician. And he lives and works in this area. So I was like, why not see if he can do some work for us? So Frank got here a little bit ago and he's been working inside our well house here. All right, Frank, how's it going in here? It's going good, just wrapping it up. Got all the old wire replaced and yeah, it looks good. There we go. Got the type of wire you should have. <laughs> I like that. And, and, and plenty of light, so. There we go. It was pretty dark over there, so. Definitely glad we got some lighter, brighter in here with some new wire. So another change that we're gonna make is the bathroom light needs to be moved because right now it's right here and then when you take a shower it's kind of dark and it's also an exhaust fan too when you turn it on it's just loud we either have to put up the noise or put up with the dark so this definitely needs to be changed got our breaker here let's see here all right let's see here can't remember exactly which one it is. It is labeled here. All right. Is it, is it that one? No. All right. What about this one? That's it. Oh, is he in the bathroom? He's watching. You watching Frank work? Huh? He's like, what is he doing in there? Having Frank here reminds me of back when we lived in the city. And do you remember for the other half of the house to come on, you had to like turn on the stove or something? Oh like yeah, because I'm the one that figured that out. We <laughs> that were like crazy. touring this house and none of the lights in the bathroom would come on. So I just wanted to make sure the cooktop worked. So I turned it on and then all of a sudden the lights in the bathroom came on. That's crazy. I'm like, how did people, and people were living in this house. I don't know what beforehand. they <laughs> Like, how is it 
that are like, oh, I'm gonna go take a shower. I gotta go turn the stove on. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Ridiculous. Thankfully, we had a good electrician back then, and he got everything working correctly without having to turn the stove on to get everything to work. It's crazy. <laughs> and thankfully, we didn't even have to pay for it. <laughs> the bank owned the house, and they paid for all the electrical to be fixed yeah. before we ever moved in. Yeah, but that was interesting. <laughs> yes. Frank, what was that story you, you mentioned about your, was that your dad you said? Oh, my Uncle Alex. Your uncle? <laughs> he put in a porch light, and he had, the, he had a plug-in drill. And so, this was before battery-operated drills. And the porch light wasn't coming on. So he got his drill to go do something, but when he pulled the drill to come on, the porch light came on. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, he was like, oh, I must have messed something up. <laughs> Drill's not scaring you, is it? <laughs> you know, I just want my mother to hold me while I eat. I got it. <laughs> what you eating there? It's a freeze-dried applesauce that my nini makes me. Is it yummy? You like it? He's like, what is Frank doing now? <laughs> <laughs> While Frank worked inside, I didn't want to be hovering over his shoulder while he worked. It's like, nobody likes that. So I headed outside and got some chores and other things done around the farm. Man, it makes a big difference having the extra light in here, lighting up this back area that didn't have a light on it. When we first moved in here, there wasn't any lights in this well house at all. So I could only really afford to get one at it at a time. So now we have the second one. And there's light all around in here. <laughs> hey, hey man. <laughs> Way to go, Frank. Thank you, sir. <laughs> what I got. Oh wow. It's a whole basket of dandelion flowers, but also red bud flowers. So while y'all were working in here, Sayla and Hezekiah and I went foraging, went for a walk. Cool. I look forward to whatever delicious way you plan to use those, but check this out, check this out. All right, so we've had this light with the bathroom to light up this area. But we have a new light right here in the bathroom. Because, oh, oh, wait, we've been using this clear curtain primarily so that light would shine so we're not <laughs> taking a shower in the dark. We don't need that anymore because, ta-da! Let there be light. 
So wow. it would be so much nicer to have light in our shower. And we can put up a shower curtain so <laughs> nobody sees through it. There we go. Little changes, little changes. <laughs> Don't have to hear that crazy exhaust. And we have light while we take a shower. Just double, double bonus. It's the little things in life. <laughs> really the little things in life. Like oh. having a light so you can see when you bathe yourself. Maybe the boys will be cleaning out. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. I'm asking for too much. Oh, look, uh oh. I can see the cobweb better now. Don't show them that stuff. <laughs> That's a bad reflection on me. I mean, it's probably- We couldn't see it before, it's in the dark. True reflection, but a bad one. Frank, appreciate you doing some work for us, man. I appreciate the work, thank you. One of the things I wanted to ask you, because there's a lot of people getting into homesteading and doing it yourself type of people. Uh, what would you recommend for people to navigate on what projects they should take on by themselves versus when they should hire people? Because that's something I've had to yeah. work my way through. Well, YouTube has been a great source for people and for me too on stuff that I've never done before. And if you're, you're watching a video and you're like, oh, I don't know, watch more videos, <laughs> <laughs> ask questions uh, from people who've done it, and then, you know, do some soul searching, I guess. But if you're like, oh, yeah, I could do that, give it a shot. If it's new stuff like electrical, which is my specialty, um, anything new has got to be done permitted. Now homeowners can pull their own permits, which is great. Okay. That also means you have to do your own work. And depending on the county, some inspectors are really good at communication. They'll come out, tell you what they expect. They're not going to read the code book to you, but um, you know they'll they'll keep coming out and they'll be helpful. Bigger counties like the one next door, don't count on that. Okay. So you got to get somebody who's insured, and they got to be licensed. Okay. But if they're not licensed, they can't pull a permit. Uh, what you want them to do okay and speaking of that how does somebody go about finding because like i said we've had interesting history of qu more qualified people and then some maybe looking back wasn't so qualified how do you navigate through those waters to make sure you find a reputable person because there's also people who builders who i know of people who've paid them to do a job and then the builder didn't do the job and then there's also the other way around where somebody's done the job a builder or whoever and then the customer hasn't paid how do you yeah. how do you get through that well um, the second part of that like for me is easy um, when I don't when I don't really know somebody um, I write out I write out a scope of work okay and most guys are like that like you're writing out basically a contract everybody signs it and then you can go to the judge and say this is what I did mm -hmm. got pictures to prove it they haven't paid me um, for the homeowner, um, like I have Instagram portfolio. That's really all I use it for. Put okay. pictures of what I've done so people can see it. Okay. Our websites are good. You know, I'm, I'm not really big enough to have a website. That's why I use Instagram. But um, the really big guys, they'll have websites. If you got a huge project, like building a whole house, um, ask them for what they've already done and go check it out. Okay. Um, if it's tile work, guys, they should have pictures of their tile work. Um, if you have a really good company comes out and gives you gives you a quote and then they send people out and it looks like they've been doing drugs that morning <laughs> that's probably a good sign which i've experienced that other people have too you know it's yeah. like they're knocking on your door and they're like you know yeah. you could tell yeah and you're like no yeah <laughs> let me call your boss i can wait on that yeah yeah nothing would you say maybe not always go with the cheapest guy <laughs> if you want quality work yeah. and i've had someone tell me i big, did a huge service changeover he said, out of three people, I was right in the middle, but I was the only one who actually got in the attic, got in the basement, looked around, oh, wow. told him my plan. You know, some people just throw numbers out there. Mm. Um, but yeah, don't go with the, I mean, sometimes the cheapest is okay, yeah. as long as you've been able to vet that person's work. Okay. All righty. Well, I won't hold you up anymore. No, Appreciate not at all. It, man. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> After Frank left, the boys cleaned off some of the storage bins and I put some of the things back in place in the loft.
And now, I don't know if I was in a spring cleaning mood or I was embarrassed to have to move around this ladder inside our house for Frank to get up into the loft or what, but I decided, you know what? It's time to get to work on getting a ladder, an official ladder inside our house to get up into the loft. So the boys and I went to our local hardware to get the parts that we needed to construct our ladder. And while we were in the store, I bet some people were walking by thinking, what are they doing? Because right in the middle of the aisle, I was laying out all the parts for the ladder, trying to figure out how I was going to make this thing work. So we got home for the hardware store, and we started pulling the books off the bookcase so that way we could move heavier books. And it does take a little bit of muscle to move this bookshelf because, well, it's a bookcase that I built myself from real wood. So it's kind of heavy. And once the books were off and we moved the bookcase a little bit further down, I next secured it in place, screwing it in to one of the studs in the wall, just so this bookcase doesn't topple over on anyone. It's always a good idea to secure your bigger, heavier, taller furniture down so it won't fall on anyone. And then after the bookcase, we moved our TV and the TV stand. And some people probably think, man, you got a huge TV. And uh, I, we do enjoy our TV. We we'll watch movies on it together as a family and a number of other things, including YouTube. But <laughs> a neat story behind the TV is I actually got it as part of a trade. I did some work for somebody a number of years ago. And as a part of the trade for the work, they gave me the TV. So I thought it was a good deal. And then after moving the bookcase, the TV, and the TV stand, and putting the books back on the shelf, we got to work putting our ladder together. And I must admit, it's one of those projects that it was a little harder than I thought it was going to be putting it all together. But we could do this. And it did take a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. But we finally got it together. And it was so nice to be able to easily climb up into the loft without having to bring an outside ladder inside the house. And while I was back up there, I'm like, it's time to do some dusting up here. Because we hadn't been getting up there very often. And it had gotten to be really dusty. I mean, really dusty. So much so that it put our air purifier to work. Got a little dusty while oh, I was dusty. My favorite part of working on these projects was being able to have show and tell with my children showing them some of my toys and telling them about some of the memories that I have attached to the various items that I've had in storage in the loft. Dad, look. Yeah, those are my old bodybuilding numbers right there. Or are my posing trunks? <laughs> my drugs. <laughs> They're clean. They're not dirty. Are you sure? <laughs> sure? I'm sure. <laughs> And sadly, both the boys and I really wanted to keep these items down in the main part of the house. But living in a smaller, tiny house, we have to be really selective on which items we bring into our house, as well as which items that we are able to keep in the main portions of our home. And regretfully, I cannot keep down my childhood toys and some of my memorabilia and things from when I was younger. They have to be in storage in the loft for now. We do plan to expand. We've purchased a second yurt and we also plan to build a building that will connect this yurt and the second yurt that we've purchased. But we have hit a few obstacles with that building project. And if you would like to know how you can help, feel free to check out the show notes below. Oh, oh, before I go, I bet some of you are wondering how Lacey's dandelions 
flowers that she had harvested, how they went, how she cooked them. Well, she battered them up, fried them up, and believe it or not, they were a fantastic side item to dinner. They were yummy.